save your money. First, let's get the obvious things out of the way. I got new glasses. Let's move on. Uh, I remember when I first got into the hobby. The whole sauce thing was pretty confusing. Like, yeah, the first things that we always buy aren't necessarily the amplifiers or whatever. It was always a new headphone or a new IEM. And like I was so many years ago, I know some of you may have some doubts. Should I buy an amplifier? How much should I spend on one? What even is an amplifier? The simple explanation is that an amplifier amplifies. Thanks, Captain Hawkins. Who said that? To be a little bit more specific, an amplifier is the thing that makes things go loud. Louder. And I'm gonna stop the explanation here because going any further would mean that I have to explain what a DAC is. And then after that, I have to explain what digital is and what analog is, yada yada yada. And you did the, all this it does not have any place in this video. So if you're using your laptop or if you're using a PC and you're driving something off the headphone jack, there is gonna be an amp inside it. If you are using your phone, just your phone speakers, those speakers are being powered by an internal amplifier. And of course, in today's headphone jackless world and all of us being forced to use these dongles, it has amplifiers in these as well. So here's where I deviate from the title a little bit. It's not that you don't need an amplifier. Of course, you need an amplifier. It's an essential part of the audio chain. But my entire point in this video is going to be that you don't need a dedicated amplifier, or at least not a very expensive one. This is fine. But at this point, I know a lot of people are going to start arguing with me. You need an amplifier. How dare you say that you don't need a, a big expensive amplifier? So I'm going to kind of format this video in kind of like a myth busters kind of thing. I'm going to address some myths that I've been seeing all over the internet regarding amplifiers. So let's start with the biggest one. Myth number one. Fixing headphones. Stop me if you've heard this situation before. You've gone out, you've blind bought a brand spanking new headphone, and when it arrived, you don't like it. You've used whatever source that you have lying around. Maybe it's your MacBook, maybe it's your PC, maybe it's just off of your phone. You mention this, and immediately someone on the internet comes up and says, that you need an amplifier to make it sound good so now you have two options you could sell it return it get your money back and then buy a new headphone or you can just double down spend even more money on an amplifier in the hopes of fixing the headphones that again you don't like sure your original budget was like two hundred dollars but what's another two hundred dollars am i right after all you need this amplifier to fix your headphone Right? Come. Uncle Critical give you a lesson. Amplifier will not fix your headphone. Just sell your headphone, get your money back, buy a new headphone, can now. Trust Uncle. To be even more specific, amplifiers will not change the tuning of a headphone. So let's say you bought a new headphone, you didn't like it because you had too much bass, too little bass. You want the mids being pushed forward a little more. You don't like the treble, you want less treble, you want more treble. All of which will not be addressed by using a different amplifier. After all, all amplifiers are meant to be flat. And if you're trying to buy an amplifier because it's not flat, well, just use EQ. It's free. Now, as with most things in the world, there are, of course, exceptions. You could have impedance swings and therefore affect the final frequency response of the headphone. But these are more in the extremes. For example, with an amplifier with extremely high output impedance in conjunction with a headphone with a low and extremely wonky impedance curve. You don't have to worry about that because again, these are all fringe cases. Exceptions not the norm. But then there might be some people who come up and say, well, it's not about tuning or changing the frequency response or whatever. It's all about you needing more. Myth number two, power. I have heard this statement so many times. And let me tell you, nine times out of 10, the guy is most likely speaking off his ass. Let me just revive some dreaded high school memories for you. What exactly is power? Yes, I know we're going into high school physics here. Definition, energy transferred per unit time. 
measured in watts. You can't argue against that. But to be even more simplistic in the context of our little hobby here, power is volume. The more power you send into a headphone, the louder it gets. It doesn't get any more complicated than that. So if you're listening at a comfortable listening volume, that means that you have enough power. Now I do understand that it's not necessarily the amplifier's fault. It's more towards the headphone's fault. After all, some headphones can be harder to drive than some others. But how do you exactly know which headphones are harder to drive and which ones are not? Most people would point to this little number here, impedance. The higher the impedance, the harder it is to drive. But what most people don't know is that this is only one part of a two-part equation. After all, the second part is sensitivity. How much volume can a headphone get to with that amount of power? Basically, the impedance is the value value that determines how much power is being allowed into the headphone. The higher impedance, the less power. The lower impedance, the more power. The sensitivity determines how loud a headphone can go with that single milliwatt of power, hence decibels per milliwatt. So for headphones to be hard to drive, there needs to be a double whammy combo of high impedance and low sensitivity. After all, you could have a headphone that's easy to drive even though it has a high impedance if it just has high sensitivity. Now, in the context of IEMs, you would see that almost every single IEM out there has the double whammy combo of low impedance and high sensitivity, which means in the case of IEMs, you are almost never going to run into power issues. You are going to be able to hit a listenable volume with IEMs, and if not, lower your volumes. I can also personally attest that you'll be able to hit listenable volumes with most headphones as well. I myself am able to listen to a HD 800 off of my Apple dongle. So in almost every single case, it doesn't seem to be a power issue, but I do understand that there are some fringe cases. For example, the infamous Hi-Fi Man HE6 with an impedance of 50 not really that high, but some units measure with a sensitivity of 77 decibels per milliwatt. That is insanely low. Plugging the values in the headphone as power calculator and trying to get to a volume of 115 decibels would require almost 7 watts of power. Of course, at this point, I need to make the disclaimer that if you're going to listen to that volume for long enough, the only amplifier you're going to need is the one in your goddamn hearing aid. I can go on and on and on about the whole power thing, but in honesty, I've also written an article on this specific topic. So if you want to learn more, go read it. Link is in the description. Now, in a lot of cases, when you point out this power argument to these amplifier nut jobs, they always come up with the counter of it. It's not actually about power. It's about the myth number three, quality of power. Uh, now we're going deeper into the nerd shit, the squiggly lines. After all, if you're talking about the quality of power, things start to get very, very numbers heavy. Now, websites like Audio Science Review and Super Best Audio Friends have gotten very popular recently for being one of the few websites to be actively publishing measurements of amplifiers and also the X. And oftentimes the conversation revolves around this mythical little metric, SINET, which is signal to noise and distortion ratio. Just put a pen on that. To dumb it down a lot, basically it means the higher the SINET, the better the amplifier. But it's not necessarily the case. Just put it in your mind that CD quality, lossless, 16 bits of dynamic range is still just 96 dBs of dynamic range. Which means if you yourself do not have any 24-bit files and above, any DAC, any amplifier above 96 decibels of noise and distortion is literally useless. Andrew and Blaine have also written a very in-depth article on why all of these weird metrics don't actually matter on headphones.com. So if you want to know more, well, link is down in the description for all of you to nerd out on. And then we have to talk about the audibility threshold, where it's just the fact that you cannot hear 
that kind of Cyanet. What is the difference between 110 and 120 dBs of Cyanet? The human ear cannot perceive that. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. So if someone tells you that you need to buy an amp because that amp sucks because of this amount of Cyanet and you need that amp because of that amount of Cyanet, punch him for me. At some point, the measurements themselves are the one causing the placebo effect everything just goes in a circle. Now, as with the other sections, I do know that there are fringe cases. For example, at low impedances, amplifiers tend to perform a little more poorly, which is why I bring up the HE6 example, because it is one of the rare few headphones with a not so high impedance, but with an extremely low sensitivity. So you're going to require a lot of power out of that very somewhat low impedance load. But as per usual, fringe cases, the exception, not the norm. I need to refresh memories again, all right? The whole point of this video is not the fact that you shouldn't buy an amplifier. It's the fact that you don't need one. Again, look at this. The one true God. In terms of noise, in terms of sign and in terms of distortion, it is fine. It works. But then we go into the other side of the argument, where it's less about the hard numbers and more about the subjective enjoyment. Myth number four, it's just better. Now when you talk to a lot of people who do play around with amplifiers, they'll talk to you about how an amplifier would increase the sound stage, make everything sound more resolving, improve the micro detail. The word plankton gets thrown in there somehow. And yes, I do acknowledge that these subjective differences may exist, but let's be honest with ourselves here. All of these are wants not needs. I myself, I don't hear that big of a difference with amps and DACs and anything else besides the transducer, which is why I don't review them. Don't get me wrong, I get access to a lot of high-end amplifiers and DACs and any other source memories out there, but every time I listen to some of them, comparing them with my existing setup, I just go that's it. I myself go with a transducer first mentality. And even then, it's not like a need or a want, right? I want better headphones. I want to upgrade my sound system. But I don't need a better amplifier for that. I guess the biggest takeaway is that when you talk to people about upgrading the audio setup, the amplifier kind of takes a backseat to the transducer, to the headphones, to the IEMs, you know? the speakers. The extent of the subjective improvements that one gets from an amplifier is not proportional to the cost. I think a lot of people can at least agree on that. Like the subjective upgrades that you get from purchasing a $2,000 amplifier is nowhere close to just buying a $2,000 headphone or a $2,000 IEM. In conclusion, and I feel like I can keep repeating myself on this. It's not that amplifiers don't matter. After all, if you want to spend your money to get the marginal improvements off of upgrading your amplifier, all the power to you. I'm not trying to disparage anyone who tries to play the hobby that way. My problem here is that there seems to be a mantra on that you need to buy a new amplifier, a new dedicated amplifier with your new headphone or your new IEM purchase. You don't. Save your money. Apple dongle. This is fine. If you want to go further than this, go for it. But this is fine. And of course, I need to thank my big money boys. Thank you to all of you who have subscribed to my $20 tier. And for those who have graciously subscribed to my $30 tiers, allow me to speak out your name. So Mike Madface, Dennis, Jerry, HK57, Money Boys, Yo James, Fisk, Ozzy Vargas, Lost, Nooft, TJ Daly, Daddy, and Carlos Rodriguez, Galisteo. Thank you all. Fun fact, uh, this is my fifth time redoing this video. I am extremely, extremely tired. But regardless, see you next week. Don't die. Fuck off.